Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon. The transatlantic slave trade was the capture, forcible transport and sale of Native Africans to Europeans for lifelong bondage in the Americans. Lasting from the 16th to 19th century, it is responsible more than any other projects or phenomenon in the history of the modern world for the creation of the African diaspora. The dispersal of black people outside their places of origin on the African continent. As a result of the transatlantic slave trade, there are presently 51.5 million people of African descent living in North America and areas to say United States, Mexico, and Canada. Approximately 66 million in South America 1.9 million people in Central America and more than 14.5 million throughout the islands of the Caribbean. Over centuries, the transformation and upheaval, these diasporic peoples have developed rich cultural traditions, distinct societies and independent nations all healing elements of a common African heritage. The transatlantic slave trade was one leg of a three-part system known as the triangular trade. The forming of the triangle began when European ships carrying firearms and manufactured goods sailed to Africa, where the commodities were traded for enslaved men, women and children. Next, the same ships transported the human cargo across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americans. This horrific journey was called the Middle Passage. Completing the triangle, the ships having disembarked the enslaved Africans were reloaded with cotton, sugar, tobacco, and other cash crops produced by slave labor and returned to Europe. The triangular trade generated incredible wealth for the European and American nations that participated in it, and all that at the expense of millions of human lives. An estimated 1.8 Africans perished during the Middle Passage. The countries that enslaved the highest number of Africans from the most to the least were Portugal, Britain, France, the Netherlands, Spain, the United States, and Denmark, shipping a total of 12.5 million enslaved Africans to toil in what was considered the New World. Other European nations, such as Germany and Sweden, took part in the trade indirectly of a belief period of time. Canada, generally omitted from slavery history, was in fact involved in slaveholding, first as a French colony, then as part of the British Empire. Another downplayed factor is the central role played by the ruling African states in capture and sale of fellow Africans to European traders, an estimated 90% of all captives. The main motivation behind these transactions was the acquisition of guns for use in inter-ethic warfares. The enslaved were abducted from as far north as present-day Senegal to as far south as Angora and transported to destinations as far south as Argentina and as far north as New England. Dishumanizing in all locations, the practice of slavery still 
could vary from place to place. This variation accounts for demographic, cultural, and even genetic distinctions among modern diasporic black populations. A July 2020 genetic study found that enslaved women contributed more than enslaved men to the modern day gene pool of people of African descent in the Americans. The findings also show that Caucasian men contributed more than Caucasian women, confirming the well-documented practice of sexual violence of enslaved women. Predating the transatlantic slave trade, where eastward and northbound slave trading enterprises known broadly as the Arab slave trade, they contributed significantly to the creation of an African diasporic presence in the old world. People from Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and the Swahili coast were deported as slaves to the Indian Peninsula, hence Africans in India. From slaves to generals and rulers, according to New Yorkers Schomburg Center for Research on Black Culture. From the 1300s, many of these Africans and their descendants became generals, admirals, architects, high-ranking officials, prime ministers, and rulers, immortalized in numerous portraits. They also founded the state of Janjira and Sanchi, where they ruled over Hindu and Jewish majorities. The Arab and transatlantic slave trades inevitably coincided if not in their commercial dealings, in their human exploitation, it is known that continental Africans were taken to the island of Madagascar by Arab enslavers from as early as the 10th century. In the 18th century, European enslavers took up operations on the island, transporting roughly 6,000 people in shackles to the U.S. slave markets. Though these Madagascans contributed a tiny percentage of the total enslaved population, their DNA is identifiable to this day among their living descendants, such as actor Maya Rudolph and director Kenan Ivoryans. To satisfy dialect or different European fascinations, enslaved Africans were also taken to Europe. And among British royals, nobles, ships, captains and merchants, a trend began of keeping Africans as entertainment, curiosities, and sometimes celebrate sons. Black dandyism and the styling of black diasporic identity, in almost all cases, these black men were extravagantly clothed in the latest fashions or liveries forced for pishiness. For the nearly four centuries before its abolition by all nations involved, the transatlantic slave trade not only influenced the composition of slave communities in Americas, but also powerfully shaped slave resistance. Take for instance the, ba the Babai Slave Rebellion of 1763 to 1764, lasting more than a year. The rebellion took place in a small Dutch colony of the Caribbean coast of South America in February of 1963. Enslaved people, led by a man, Kofi, rose up, set the Dutch fleeing, and took control of the colony. In the present century, the diaspora also comprises people of African descent who willingly embark on their journeys overseas in search for education, love, and greener pastures. Of recent, we are seeing acts of people of African descent who willingly take themselves overseas and abroad, being tortured and being treated the same way our ancestors were treated when slaves. Take example of what's happening now in the Middle East. Well, thank you so much for watching African Diaspora News Channel and the African Diaspora News Insider. My name is Osi the Bone Child, and thank you so much just for watching this video, but please don't forget 
to subscribe. I'll be seeing you in another video, but until then, please take care and don't you forget that I love you all.